Hi, I'm Adam Johns. He's Mark Potash, and welcome to another edition of the Bears Video Mailbag, where we answer your questions from Twitter. All right, Mark, let's get started. This is from Richard Pugh on Twitter. How much was this the Bears playing well versus the Falcons playing poorly? They're talking about the, the big week six win, 27-13. Um, there's a lot of drops, obviously, from the Atlanta Falcons part. No, I, I give the Bears total credit. I think they played a part in those drops. I think the way they attacked the Falcons and kind of went at, at their weakness and just really were physical with them, I think that, that's why you saw a lot of those drops. Hey, the Falcons are a team that, uh, even though they're kind of struggling overall, they, they, they were very good at home. They had like almost 600 yards in one game. They had almost 500 in another against the Bears. You know, not very much, only 13 points. I give the Bears total credit. I think they took a team out of its element. They did what good defenses do. The question is, can they do it against other teams like the Packers? And I think that'll tell the tale this season. It was a great day overall for the Bears, but I think one player struggled, and, and it was Jordan Mills. And we have a, a question from Robert O'Neill. Given Jordan Mills' struggles this year, would the smart move to be to put Michael Ola at right tackle when Jermon Bushwhack comes back? Uh, I think it's a, that's a great option. I don't know exactly how poorly that Jordan Mills is playing, but you know that's that's definitely an option. Here's the only thing, though. I don't think the Bears are even considering the fact that Jordan Mills is playing that poorly. They don't really see the big picture there. But since he's been a starter, he's been their weakest link on the offensive line. But as a unit, they continue to play well, so they don't really see it as an individual problem. So I don't think you're gonna. I think it's an interesting proposition. I just don't think you're going to see that move. It's going to take a lot more than just Sunday's game against the Falcons for the Bears to make that kind of change. I think Tressman was saying that Mills struggled with the noise. He struggled with the, the faster turf, and the, the Falcons definitely took advantage of him there. But, yes, this dates but, back yeah, to last They're season. always making excuses yeah. for him. I mean, he really has not been that great by any, by any judgment. But uh, he's still good enough that they can grow with him. They think he can be good. But I, I don't think he's been as good as, as, as he can be. All right, now what's getting good is the Bears' run defense. Porous last year, big improvement this year. And this is from Sean Keenan on Twitter. Has the run defense shown enough yet to trust them? Uh, he, his stats here, 103 yards per game, ranks them top 10 in the NFL. Have they played enough quality competition? Well, I think they have. I mean, they were going to be better against the run. Last year was a disaster because they had so many injuries. They're just, even with the linebacker situation, they're healthier on the defensive line. Uh, it's just a better situation. There's no doubt that they're better. You know, are they a great run defense? Uh, I don't know about that, but I will say this. They're missing fewer tackles, and as anybody knows, that's the key to stopping the run. According to Pro Football Focus, they only had like three missed tackles, and that's the fewest they've had in any game this year, and that was with them missing all their linebackers. To me, that's a sign that at least the coaches are coaching, and they're playing better, and they're playing better fundamental football. That's a good sign that that run defense, they're going to break down every now and then. Um, you know, I don't know how they do against DeMarco Murray at this point, let's put it that way, but I think overall, I don't think it's this big hole in the defense like it was last year. I think the old cliche is it all starts up front and the Bears defensive line just with Will Sutton and Eagle Ferguson added through the draft. Jeremiah Ratliff back from his concussion. Jared Allen coming back after his pneumonia. Willie Young and Lamar Houston really playing well. It's just a better defensive front and really since week one the Bears run defense has been pretty good. The Buffalo Bills gashed them but since then they have steadily shown progress and improvement in, in you see it not becoming a weakness like it was last year. All right, let's stay on the defense. Um, a lot of praise is due to the defense after not only Carolina, but what they did against the Falcons. They did it without Lance Briggs against Atlanta, and so a lot of questions about his status here. This is from Big Shoulder Sports. Is Mel Tucker able to do his job easier with Briggs on the sidelines, you know, with, without the player coach muddying the waters? <laughs> I don't know how much Lance is muddying the waters. I will say this, though. I think the fact that their, their linebackers really have not been playing that well is one reason why the backup guys weren't. It wasn't a very big drop-off and, and looked like actually an upgrade the, the way they played. These were hungry guys who knew that the, it was all on them to be as perfect as they could be, and they were. So I guess the point is this is not like losing – Brian Urlacher and Lance Briggs in their prime as they had to do once uh, against the Rams uh, a few years ago and still came out with a win. Uh, this is not quite the drop off there, not, not even close actually. So that, that has to factor into well, it. I think that the point Mr. Big Shoulder Sports is making is that last year Lance Briggs had to be a coach because the coaching they were getting at the linebackers wasn't adequate but by any means and they needed to add somebody with more experience. That's why Reggie Herring is here and Reggie Herring has won everybody over. Lance Briggs has professed his love for this man. Well, there is an interesting aspect involved with this question, and that goes to uh, the loyalty that the you know Lovey Smith's Bears feel towards him, and that awkward transition that they're going through, where 
it's almost like even though guys like Lance Briggs and Charles Tillman, they're playing fairly well, not, not as well as they have, even though they're playing fairly well, it's still almost going to be uh, addition by subtraction when they leave, you know, dare I say, because it just seems like uh, they're not uh, fully engaged in the whole Mel Tucker defense. I, I think the Bears defense, frankly, is going to be a lot better when Mel Tucker has all his guys on it. Uh, that, that's the only way that I can say it. All right, well, thanks for watching this Bears video mailbag. He's Mark Potash. I'm Adam Johns. Be sure to send us your questions on Twitter.